So if you've been watching me on TikTok or if you've just been following me on social media, then you know that not too long ago, I got tested for the coronavirus, COVID-19. This is my coronavirus story. Back in February, before the world went to shit, me and my friend decided to pack our bags and literally hop in a car and drive all the way from Toronto to LA. And to give you a bit of backstory, if you don't follow me and you don't know anything about me, I'm a musician, I make music. That is basically why I decided I wanted to pack up everything and go to LA and embark on this journey to chase my dreams. And that's what it was for both of us. It was like, hey, you know, we're gonna leave behind everything we have at home, travel to LA and become a new me. And that's what it was for me. LA was so much more than just a geographical location. It, it represented me being the person that I wanna be that's chasing my dreams. It was a super duper long drive. We drove for, I think like five or six days. We stopped at, uh, we made a bunch of stops. The most notable ones were Chicago, Denver, Vegas, and then LA. Those were like the main stops that we made other than like rest breaks. I did a vlog and I vlogged the entire journey. So if you wanna see, I did like daily vlogs of the journey and they're here on YouTube. Chicago was super dope because we stopped there during um, All-Star Weekend, so that was cool. It was a crazy journey. We drove all the way to LA and when we got there, we were like hotel hopping. We we're basically homeless for like, uh, maybe like two, two to three weeks until we finally found a place. We found a place, I think at the beginning of March um, and we signed a lease. Uh, it was cool. It was a really exciting time. Uh, I, I think both myself and my friend Kyle, we were just most excited to be there because like I was saying, you know, LA represented so much more than just a geographical location. This new me, I was vlogging every single day. I was making three to five TikToks every single day posting on Instagram, just I was just pumping out content and chasing, it, it really felt like I was chasing my dreams and it felt like I was a different me than the me that left Toronto. Before I left Toronto, I think the person I was became very complacent. Before 2019, I would say, I never feel like I really gave my dreams as a musician a real chance. I always did it like kind of on the side and I never really dove into it. So when I, went on this trip to LA, that's what it felt like I was doing. It felt like I was jumping off the cliff and diving into it. And it was like, okay, now it's, I have to do it. It was like sink or swim. So therefore I, I felt like I became this new person and it was really exciting. What I think would have most people uncomfortable, the uncertainty of the entire trip. Like we don't know where we're gonna stay. I, I had no idea how I was gonna make money. Like I had no idea what my life was gonna look like. But all of that uncertainty that I think would stop people from going on a trip like this is what excited me about it because I was excited about finally chasing my dreams and really, really going after it. We signed our lease and it was super exciting. It wasn't like the most fancy spot. It wasn't, it wasn't anything crazy. In fact, to be honest, it was a one bedroom that me and my friend had both agreed that we were gonna live in. We agreed that we were gonna share a one bedroom together. It wasn't luxurious, but it was okay because it was this representation of me being this new me that I wanted to be. For the first time in my life, I was going all in on music. I dove in, creating everything I wanted to create and it felt good. It felt really good. I had like this, it was like this dopamine rush, but it was like a constant dopamine rush, you know? We're there, excited, ready to take on the world. And so we signed the lease, we were hotel hopping for two weeks, we signed the lease, and then we moved in. And we were there, I would say, maybe like the third, within the first week of us moving when we started feeling really sick. Um, we had really flu-like symptoms, we had fever, uh, cough, we were getting chills. Um, it was really bad, it, it, it felt like we had the flu, you know, but, Obviously, flu-like symptoms are consistent with the coronavirus COVID-19 symptoms. So we were really, really, really freaking out. So keep in mind, this is March. Uh, I would say early March. It wasn't crazy yet, uh, but it was like the calm before the storm. Like January, when the virus was first became a thing in China, everyone freaked out about it. But then in February, I feel like it kind of slowed down a little bit. And then in March, it kind of slowed down too. But then out of nowhere, I think it was like early to mid-March, all of a sudden it just blew up again. The world just shut down with the world being in this quarantine in this crazy state, crazy once in a lifetime thing that none of us have ever experienced and likely will not experience again. Hopefully will not experience again. Nothing that our parents likely have ever experienced. This is nothing like SARS, MERS or Ebola or any of those things. Those viruses didn't have the world literally shutting down. Like this virus is different. Like I'm sharing with you my coronavirus story, but truth is everybody has a coronavirus story. So we started freaking out because we were seeing all these like news reports of like COVID-19 
every single day and we would see the story develop and it would get crazier and crazier and crazier. It came to a point where we had our backs against the wall, essentially. What happened was the Canadian US border was getting shut down and Justin Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, went on TV and he had like this very, very epic moment. He literally froze. It was like a movie. It was literally like a movie. He froze and he was like, let me make this clear. If you're abroad, it's time for you to come home. And then we started freaking out. But truth is, even when Justin Trudeau said that, I was still reluctant to leave. We had these flu-like symptoms and I think it was after Trudeau said that, we stayed an extra two or three days. The immediate instinct when we saw Justin Trudeau say that, it was like, we gotta go home, we gotta pack up and leave and we're freaking the heck out. But then I was like, hmm, I don't know. Do we really need to leave? Like, yes, we're feeling really sick, and but it could just be the flu. And also I was like, even if we do have it, um, you know, we're both young and healthy. Like, I don't think it's something that we need to seriously be concerned about. Like, I don't think it's something that is life-threatening for us. So I don't think our risk to the virus is very high. I think after the immediate panic of seeing Trudeau like broadcast out on TV was like, okay, wait, let me just reevaluate. Let me just, let's sit down and consider our options again. Do we have to go home? Just the thought of going home made me extremely uncomfortable because it made me feel like I would be reverting back to the person that I was when I was in Toronto that was still kind of not all in on my dreams yet. It felt like I was giving up on my dreams. I know that objectively, I'm not actually giving up on my dreams by going home because of the situation, but LA was like representation, this metaphor for me being all in on my dreams. So leaving LA was like one of the most difficult decisions I'd ever made. Friend Kyle, my roommate Kyle, he was very adamant on leaving. And I think understandably so given the circumstance, but I had this like, it was so hard for me to let go that we ended up staying an extra two or three days. And for me, my symptoms weren't as crazy, um, but I think Kyle was experiencing it a little bit worse than me. He was getting, uh, I think a high fever. There was one night where it got really bad and we ended up driving around LA and we went to like three or four hospitals and they just refused to test us. I don't know what the testing situation on that is now, but back in March, it was so difficult to get tested. We were just getting rejected, denied, 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 because the symptoms that we were showing just weren't serious enough. So just that combined with the whole situation it led us to coming home for me it was so heartbreaking because i felt like i'm coming home and i'm just giving up on myself but coming home in that moment it felt like i was quitting on myself ultimately we decided to come home we hopped in the car because we knew that the airport was crazy at this point we had not gotten tested yet so it was like okay if we are covid positive we don't want to go to the airport because we don't want to infect other people on the plane. We both agreed that that wouldn't be the right thing to do. And then at the same time, if we're COVID negative, it's like, okay, now you don't want to go fly because you're like, what if you get COVID-19 from getting on the plane and you know, just a confined space at the airport and whatever. So we're like, okay, you know what? We drove here, we can pack up and drive back home. It was so tough for me, man. I think leaving LA, like physically leaving and packing up was one of the most difficult things I ever had to do emotionally. It took a long time for me to come to peace with it. The drive from Toronto to LA was super different than the drive from LA to Toronto. Because when we drove from Toronto to LA, we were doing pit stops and it was a little bit leisurely. The drive from LA to Toronto, three days after they shut down the border. So we don't really know what the situation at the border is like. Justin Trudeau was like, if you have symptoms, you're not allowed back. And we kind of had mild symptoms so we weren't really sure what was going on. But we said, you know what, we're just gonna go to the border and let the border assess our situation and see what happens, you know? Either we get denied or we get through, I don't know. It was a very, very, very frantic drive. It was one of the hardest drives I'd ever had in my life because we didn't stop. We just drove nonstop. Like I would drive, Kyle would sleep. Kyle would drive, I would sleep. We went all the way from LA to Toronto in like, I think one and a half, two days. It was nuts. The only thing we stopped for was food and gas. We got to the border and um, well, I'm in Toronto now. So of course the border let me in. And once we came in, the first thing we did was we drove straight to the hospital in Toronto and we told them everything. We said, hey, we just got back from LA literally today and we've been experiencing like flu-like symptoms. What was concerning us the most was we had slight symptoms of shortness of breath. And that was really terrifying for both me and Kyle because at that point, we're like, oh my God, do we have pneumonia? And pneumonia is like, that's what's killing people, right? Anyways, we went there, we got tested, and 
here are my test results. And I was shocked when they came back um, because we were both convinced that we had it actually. Um, we were super, super convinced that we had it and we got the results and they were negative. It was very bittersweet because it felt like, okay, my test results are negative. It also felt like the result from my music aspirations in LA were negative as well. Uh, it's been a few weeks now that I'm back in Toronto. I'm happy that I'm negative. I've settled into the condo that I was living in before. Leaving put me in a really dark place and just being back here, getting settled in, setting up my new workstation, working on music, pumping out content for the internet and just really getting into my stride has helped me break out of that dark place so that's great i've been able to overcome that and i'm just gonna keep pushing forward i'm not gonna let this whole experience hold me down and that is pretty much my coronavirus story and i've decided that even though the coronavirus has had such a massive impact on my life it shifted my life in an entirely different direction and at the moment when the shift was happening, it put me in a really dark place. I'm in a way better mindset now. And this is a story that I've been wanting to share for a very long time. I think everybody has a coronavirus story. This is truly a once in a lifetime thing. And everybody's experienced some kind of effect of the coronavirus on their life. So I thought I'd share my story with you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this story. Hopefully you guys are staying safe. And uh, I'm gonna try my best to like, create as much content for YouTube as possible. I know I haven't been doing vlogs as much as I did before while I was on my journey. I promise I'm gonna do my best. So please, if you're new, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and drop a comment and follow me on my other social media links.